Hi there, I'm Shaul al Magor, and I want to tell you all about process symmetry in probabilistic transducers. But first, I'd like you to meet my things. I have a blue thing, a green thing, and a red thing. My things share a bowl of food squares. Food square is a trademark of the fake food corporation. Food square is neither food nor square. And in order for them to share their food fairly, I have placed it under the control of an arbiter. When it's time to eat, each thing goes onto a platform and screams. In response, the arbiter grants them food in some order. I've implemented the arbiter as a round robin, giving the first food square to platform 1, then to platform 2, then to platform 3, and so on. So, for example, if the blue and green things scream on the first step, and then the red thing screams on the second and third steps, then the arbiter gets the input 1, 2 on the first step, then 3, and again 3. So it grants blue a food square on the first step, then grants no food squares on the second step, since the green thing did not scream at the second step, and then grants red a food square on the third step. Unfortunately, despite their clever appearance, the things are rather stupid. And in particular, I can't teach them to always go on the same platforms. This means that sometimes they actually go on the platforms like this. Then, if they ask for food in the same way, the arbiter sees the inputs 2, 3, then 1, and again 1. Now, however, it doesn't grant any food squares, because nobody asked for food in their correct turn, and the poor stupid things stay hungry. The problem is, of course, that my round-robin arbiter is not process-symmetric. That is, it does not ignore the platforms or identities of the processes. In this case, for example, the arbiter is biased towards whoever gets on platform 1, and that thing gets to ask for food first. So the question is, can we fix this? Can we construct an arbiter where it doesn't matter which platform each thing goes on? One way to achieve this is to equip the arbiter with a source of randomness. Source of randomness is a trademark of the fake food corporation, may induce random side effects. And then the starting platform of the round robin is chosen uniformly at random. How does this help? Well, we think of it this way. However the things behave, there are three possible outcomes, uniformly distributed, according to who was chosen to eat first. But if you permute the things and send them to different platforms, the output distribution will be permuted in the same way, thus feeding the same things. So from the things perspective, it doesn't matter which platform they get on. And that is process symmetry. Let's formalize that. Like our arbiter from before, we consider probabilistic transducers. These are finite state machines with probabilistic transitions, such that in each state, when they read an input letter, they probabilistically choose a successor state and respond with the output labeled on that state. For example, in state S0 here, if we see the input letter I1, I2, we can go to state S1 with probability 0.2 and outputting O1, or to S2 with probability half, outputting again O1, or to S3 with probability 0.3, outputting O1, O3. Thus, given an input word x, a probabilistic transducer generates a distribution of output words, denoted t of x. An important detail of our model is that the input and output alphabets are structured. We have k input signals, i1 to ik, and k output signals, o1 to ok. So the input alphabet consists of sets of input signals, and the output alphabet consists of sets of output signals. Intuitively, the input and output signals are parameterized by the identities of the processes. In the things example, the identities are the platforms. This allows us to talk about permutations of those identities. For a permutation pi of the set 1 to k, and for a letter i that is a subset of the signals, the permutation pi of i is obtained by permuting the indices. For example, if we take the letter i which has signals i1 and i3, and we have the cyclic permutation 1, 2, 3, which sends 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to 1, then the permuted letter pi of i has the signals i2 and i1. We can also permute output letters in the same way. We now lift this to words and to distributions on words. That is, for a word x, the permuted word pi of x is obtained by permuting each letter of x, and for a distribution of output words, we simply permute all the words without changing their probabilities. Now, we say that a probabilistic transducer is symmetric if for every permutation pi and for every input word x, we have that pi of t of x equals t of pi of x. That is, we get the same distribution of outputs if we first run t on x and then permute the words in the output distribution, or if you first permute the input word and then run t on it. 
Again, the intuition behind this is that in a symmetric transducer, if processes are rewired into different input and output signals, then from their point of view, nothing changes. Process symmetry has been studied before. In the 90s, there has been a lot of work on the broader context of symmetry reductions, where we reduce the state space of a model by taking its quotient under some relation called a symmetry. This was later extended also to probabilistic systems. More recently, there has been some work on process symmetry exclusively. In particular, this work considers symmetry patterns, where the number of inputs is not fixed. Most of the works we mentioned are in the context of reducing the state space of the system, or at least improving the efficiency of model checking. Here, we argue that process symmetry has merits that go well beyond alleviating the state explosion problem. Indeed, process symmetry can serve as a weak notion of fairness, in the sense that if a symmetric system is buggy, at least the bugs are not in a bias toward or against a certain process. More generally, symmetry can be seen as a partial notion of explanation as to why a system is correct. Naturally, it also has algorithmic benefits. Once you know your system is symmetric, you can model check symmetric properties by checking an example. For instance, if you want to verify the property for all i and j, if thing i requested food before thing j, then thing i is fed before thing j, then in a symmetric system, you only need to check this against a concrete example. For example, i being blue thing and j being green thing. So, how can we check whether a transducer is symmetric? Well, we need to check that for every permutation pi and for every word x, we have the equality pi of t of x equals t of pi of x. A priori, we may be worried that checking this for every permutation will alone take n factorial tests. However, as you may know, the group of all permutations of 1 to k, denoted sk, is generated by two permutations, the cyclic permutation 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 k, and the adjacent transposition 1, 2 i.e. swapping 1 and 2. So the first lemma we have, and it is very easy to prove, is the following. If a transducer t is both pi symmetric and tau symmetric for permutations pi and tau, then it's also symmetric for their composition pi tau. So I haven't actually defined what it means to be pi symmetric, but you get the intuition. It means being symmetric only with respect to the permutation pi. A corollary of that is that a transducer is symmetric if and only if it's symmetric with respect to the cyclic permutation 1, 2, dot, 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 k and the transposition 1, 2. So now it remains to decide whether a transducer is symmetric for a single permutation. We show that the problem of deciding whether a transducer t is pi symmetric is solvable in polynomial time. The idea behind the proof is the following. Given a transducer t and a permutation pi, we construct two probabilistic automata, A and B, where A accepts a word W, which is a combination of an input word X and an output word Y, with probability P, if and only if the probability that the transducer outputs Y when reading X is P. So we basically push in the outputs. The automaton B is built in the same way, but simulates the permuted inputs and outputs. For example, let's take the transducer we had before, or rather the single transition. The probabilistic automaton A works as follows. Note that from S0, if the transducer sees the input I1, I2, there are two possible outputs with non-zero probabilities, either O1 or O1, O3. Therefore, A simulates this transition by starting at S0, where it can see one of two letters, either I1, I2, O1, which corresponds to the case where the output is O1, or I1, I2, O1, O3, where the output is O1, O3. Then, the probabilities of transitions are induced by the transducer. So with probability 0.2, A goes to S1, with probability 0.5 to S2, and the remaining probability, which was to S3 in the transducer, now goes to a rejecting sink, since we already established that the output is supposed to be O1. Similarly, when reading the letter I1, I2, O1, O3 here, the transition is with probability 0.3 to S3, similarly to the transducer, and all the remaining probability is to the rejecting sink. Then, apart from the rejecting sink, all states are accepting. This reflects the fact that the acceptance probability of a word composed of inputs x and outputs y is the probability that the transducer outputs y given input x. Next, we construct the automaton B. For this example, take the cyclic permutation 1, 2, 3. The structure of B is identical to that of A, but the letters are different. So in B, in order to take the analogous transition to taking I1, I2 from S0, we need to see the input I3, I1, since applying the permutation to I3, I1 gives I1, I2. 
Similarly, the output letters we look at are 03 and 0302. This way, we get that the acceptance probability of the composed word in B is the probability that given pi of x, the transducer outputs pi of y. Having constructed A and B, we now have that T is pi symmetric if and only if A and B are equivalent. Fortunately, equivalence of probabilistic automata is decidable in polynomial time, so we just check whether A and B are equivalent. Okay, great, we can handle process symmetry. However, process symmetry seems like a very restrictive notion. In some cases, we might not be able to guarantee such strict symmetry. For example, going back to our random round robin, if the random source is given by bits, then we cannot get a probability of exactly one third, at least not with a bounded number of bits. In some cases, we might not even want such strict symmetry. For example, we actually only care that our things get the right amount of food, regardless of their platform, but we don't actually care about the order of feeding. We would therefore like to study approximate notions of symmetry. We propose four such notions. Approximate symmetry, which extends process symmetry by allowing some wriggle room in the distributions. Qualitative symmetry, which extends process symmetry by allowing a lot of wriggle room in the distributions. Peric symmetry, where we ignore the order of outputs and only consider their peric image. And this comes in two flavors, peric symmetry in distribution and peric symmetry in expectation. Let's start with approximate symmetry. Recall that in standard symmetry, we say that a transducer is symmetric if for every permutation pi and input word x, we have that the distributions pi of t of x and t of pi of x are equal. Another way of saying this is that for every input word x and output word y, the probability inscribed to y by pi of t of x is the same as that inscribed to y by t of pi of x. Note that in the proof earlier, when we constructed a and b, I described it slightly differently, but this formulation is equivalent. For approximate symmetry, we simply relax this equality. For a positive number delta, we say that a transducer is delta symmetric if for every permutation pi, input word x, and output word y, the distance between the probability inscribed to y by pi of t of x and that inscribed to y by t of pi of x is at most delta. This definition brings with it bad news and worse news. So the bad news is that this definition is not robust enough to be invariant under composition. That is, being delta pi symmetric and delta tau symmetric does not imply being delta pi tau symmetric. It actually only guarantees two delta pi tau symmetry, where delta pi symmetry means that the transducer is delta symmetric with respect to pi. But the even worse news is that the problem of deciding whether a transducer is delta symmetric is undecidable, and this holds also for a fixed permutation pi. So that ended miserably. One way to keep the idea of approximate symmetry but regain decidability is to further relax the equality of distributions. In qualitative symmetry, instead of requiring that the distributions pi of t of x and t of pi of x are equal, we only require that they have equal supports. That is, for every input word x and output word y, the probability inscribed to y by pi of t of x is non-zero if and only if the probability inscribed to y by t of pi of x is non-zero. Technically, looking at qualitative symmetry turns the probabilistic nature of the transducer to a non-deterministic one. Then, we can apply a similar construction to that of the probabilistic automata we saw before, but instead, we now use non-deterministic finite automata. This gives us the following theorem. Deciding whether a transducer is qualitative symmetric is p-space complete. Well, actually, it only gives us the upper bound. For the lower bound, we show a reduction from universality of NFAs over a binary alphabet whose states are all accepting. Note that these restrictions are important. A quick reduction from universality without these restrictions does not seem to work. We now move on to Peric symmetry. The things are not competitive creatures. They just want their fair share of food. So we don't actually care in what order they receive their food, only that no matter which platform they get on, they'll be given the amount of food they ask for. We capture this using Peric images. For an output word Y over subsets of O1 to OK, we define its Peric image to be a vector of K natural numbers that denotes how many times we have seen the output OI in Y for each I between 1 and K. Now, given an input word X, the distribution of outputs T of X now induces a distribution on Peric images, which we denote by P of T of X. And since we have a distribution on vectors of numbers, we can talk about its expectation, which is the sum of our all inputs Y of the probability of seeing Y times its Peric image. 
When we apply a permutation pi to a break image, we simply permute the entries of the vector according to pi. We then define two notions of Parix symmetry. A transducer is Parix symmetric in distribution if for every permutation pi and input x, the distribution of permuted Parix images pi of p of t of x is the same as the distribution of Parix images of the permuted input p of t of pi of x. In the second definition, we look at the expectation. A transducer is Parix symmetric in expectation if for every input word x, the permuted expected Parix image of t of x is the same as the expected Parix image of t of pi of x. That is, permutations of the inputs permute the expected Parix image of the output. For the suspicious reader, we remark that all the definitions are distinct. Standard symmetry implies Parix distribution symmetry, which in turn implies expected symmetry, but none of the converse implications hold. Deciding whether a transducer is Parix symmetric in both variants can actually be done using a similar reduction to what we had before, but now the automata we end up with are probabilistic automata with weights, also called probabilistic reward automata. Fortunately, the equivalence of these automata has been studied and was shown to be in NC for the distribution version and in randomized NC for the expected version. Note that Parix symmetries are closed under composition of permutations, so again it's enough to check against generators. So we have the following. Deciding whether a transducer is Parix symmetric can be done in NC for distribution symmetry and in RNC for expected symmetry. Okay, some concluding remarks before I pack my things and go away. Symmetry is a design concern in many protocols, and identifying it can be used both for gaining trust and understanding of the system, as well as for speeding up algorithms, or succinctly representing specifications. In this work, we study several notions of process symmetry for probabilistic transducers. Strict process symmetry, relaxed versions, approximate process symmetry and qualitative symmetry, and Parix symmetry, distribution-wise and expectation-wise. The complexity of determining whether a transducer admits a certain kind of symmetry ranges from NC through p-space and all the way to undecidability. There is a lot to do in the context of process symmetry. Many other definitions are interesting, and also many other models such as automata, games, logic, etc. Thank you for listening.